43 from him to beat us, but uh, uh, it's, it's just frustrating sometimes when you let, let some of those slip away. I, I was wondering in terms of improvements for this team, but the way in which you coach, but also it turns into a critique or a criticism, how, how do you ride, ride that fine line of, uh, of not going overboard and too critical, but also saying, hey, you know, Bo, Nick, this is what you could do better so we get you know, really, really good for conference play? Well, first of all, what can coach do better? Like, should we have gone 1-3-1 one, one earlier? Uh, you know, should coach have subbed to give those guys a little bit more rest uh, earlier? You know, should coach have done a better job handling a guy? You know, Chris Davenport is completely different to handle than Bo Beach. Dallas Moore is completely different to handle than Bebe. Trent Mackey is completely different to handle than whoever, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I, I've screwed up and I've made some really bad errors. Um, never it, with, with, with bad intent, just because I'm a coach and because I coach the way I coach and I'm very passionate, I've made some poor decisions and, and, and said some things I shouldn't have said. And that's the fine line where what separates it, though, when the day's done, like the thing I love about Chris is, Chris, Chris brought me to the side and said, Coach, people don't understand our relationship. And don't, so don't worry about people. Just worry about us. That's pretty powerful. Um, and I do understand them differently than other people do. But you're right, it's a fine line and everybody's different. You know, Mama Do, I can remember like yesterday, I mean, Mama Do, you could, you could coach Mama Do completely different than Baylor than you could coach Aaron Bruce. I mean, it's been like that my whole life. Every kid is so different. I remember Jerron Granberry came up to me and he said to me, Coach, now I see why you get into me and you can't get into this other person. Because that other person can't handle it. And I thought, wow, that's pretty, you know, that's pretty insane. He's a freshman. And, uh, you know, so, and, and, and here's the other thing too, Richard. You're coaching guys because you see them playing minutes, you see them filling roles, you see them being crucial parts to the, to the team. And they've got to be prepared and ready because once the lights come on and they get between the black lines, it's like you can stop and say do them. So sometimes you got to coach hard early knowing what's up ahead. And they don't see that. Athletes don't understand that. And you've got to be able to, you know, and, and if you don't make it personal, like I can lay my head down every night. My wife got me this beautiful sound machine that I never thought I needed before. What is it, the waves? Yeah, I, I do the ocean. You do those? She, I figured, just running at the beach. She likes the rainforest, but, um, but my point is, you know, I can lay my head down at night and I can go to sleep. I can look in the mirror every morning and I can feel good about myself. I don't know if every coach in America can. Because sometimes, you're right, it's a fine line. And let me tell you something, Richard, I'm the first one, if I make an error or I make a mistake, I'm gonna apologize. And I'm going right to the source, and if I have to do it in front of the team, I'm gonna do it. And, and I think that's critical in, in the development.